In this video, I'm going to be going over how to run multiple voltages uh, within your light. So you can run 12 volt or 5 volt. Uh, a lot of the new stuff that I'm selling now is 12 volt, uh, but it is compatible with 5 volt RGBW LEDs as well, uh, the addressable kind at least. Um, so I'm gonna show you this light here that I just finished up, uh, as well as kind of go over some of the wiring things that I do that are just a little bit better for compatibility. So I'm disconnecting the bezel. The way that I usually run these, I actually run JST connections for the for the front half of the light. That way everything's just plug and play. When I close up the light, all I have is a connection. Uh, in this case, I actually have an output that goes to fog lights. So I actually have to run two JSTs. I run one JST that comes from the back half to the front half, and then I have another one that goes from the front half to the back. Um, so that way it can go out the back, and that way the, the ghost controller will actually run through the back half of the light, light everything up, then run through the front half, do all of its lighting there, and then run back out the back down to the fog light so it all ties in together. Um, so that is the case for this one. Uh, as far as this one goes, um, everything on the front in this case is a five volt, so I didn't really have to worry about running any 12 volt to that. Um, if you do, you will have to consider that, you know, maybe you would have to get a different size JST, uh, like a five pin JST, or you have to do two JSTs or something. You might have to get a little bit creative on how to do that, how to go about that. Uh, but in this case, I just use a single uh, three pin JST for the inputs and a single three pin JST for the outputs. Um, also something to keep in mind when you're running a whole bunch of LEDs together, uh, any power that you run through addressable, uh, the way that it'll, it, it will go through each LED into the next LED and so on and so on and so on. So if you want to kind of reduce some of the heat and reduce some of the power that's going through each of your LEDs, you can actually inject power at different points within the headlight build. Um, so one thing that I'll do is I'll tie in my grounds and my powers and everything um, to a centralized location and that way let's say in this case I have the power coming in the light going through everything and then back out but I also have a power line right here that actually connects the power and ground from the input to the power and ground from the output and that way the power can actually have a, a very easy path of low resistance to get back out the light and go to the next device. Um, that way it's powering everything inside of the light, but everything inside of the light is not forcing the power through it to go to the stuff that's outside of the light, uh, in this case, uh, fog lights. Uh, as far as the light itself goes, I have inputs for the standard three pin JST, I usually run five volt to that, so it actually will be five volt coming in. Uh, this is the input here. So I have five volt that comes in on the standard three pin, and then I have another two wires coming in for power and ground for the 12 volt. I run power and ground, in this case, first to my demon eye. So that runs into here, my driver is actually underneath, and it runs to that, and here is the power and ground. So I actually run 5 volt basically bypassing the demon eye and then the data line just goes into the demon eye out of the demon eye and then here where it will plug into the front of the light and then the 12 volt is here so in this light this is the only source of 12 volt that I have but the the basic process would be to run this 12 volt to anything within the light that needs 12 volt so think of this like your 12 volt plug and this is your 5 volt plug and so you're getting your, your power sources from the two. So anything that needs the 12 volt, send 12 volt through this. Anything that needs the five volt, tap into these wires to get that five volt. Um, so for example, uh, I do have a 12 volt strip right here. Uh, for these, there is an injection point here where you can put 12 volt. Keep in mind though, the plug is 12 volt. So if you plug in a five volt to this, and then you run 12 volt to these, you will fry everything that's 5 volts connected to this. So if you want to inject power, you can do that by just cutting the red and white wires on here. That will kill power but leave the data line. And that way you can run everything through this 
uh, for the 12 volt, you'll still get your data line from the 5 volt, but you won't back feed and mess anything up on your 5 volt side. Basically, the way that I run it, so here is my controller. I'll get this out of the way for a minute. My controller, I actually am now just using the ghost box and I put my inverters on top and then I run my trigger wires. I got all four of them here. The turn signals, my DRL, and this is my brake line. I do run my brake line now. Uh, I didn't used to, but um, having that option there for them to add, or you or whoever to add the uh, trigger for the show mode, even if you don't use it, it's nice to have it run so you can get access to it. So I usually just kind of uh, wrap this up and then like slide it up under there and just just secure it so it doesn't go anywhere But if if someone were to need it at some point it is there. It's easy to grab um, And it's just a wire so I do run the brake line even if it's a headlight uh, For that show mode purpose. I uh, as you saw if you've watched my most recent video about programming demon eyes It can actually be used if you're using addressable demon eyes to activate the demon eyes so, I mean, that's just another case where uh, Running this line even if you're not using it probably a good idea um, I also run 12 volt power to the ghost so if 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 you just remember the only thing that's really important to come from the ghost is your data line you don't actually have to send the power from the ghost you don't have to send 5 volt 12 volt 24 no, no, what doesn't matter uh, what only really matters is that the ghost gets power whether it be 12, 12 volt or 5 volt and that uh, the data lines come from the ghost to the headlights. So beyond that, uh, it, it doesn't really matter if you're sending 5 volt or 12 volt into the ghost controller. So the way that I've decided to do it now, I actually run 12 volt into the ghost and I run the 5 volt into the wiring that goes to the headlight. So I've got the 3 pin wire for my data line and my 5 volt power and ground and then I run a second uh, 12 volt power and ground uh, along the same braided uh, wiring so I run that to the headlight and that way I have in this case you can see I have a 12 volt coming in which is coming from here and then it connects uh, these are the styles that I'm using now so I mean find new stuff here and there and I switch out and get these pretty cheap on Alibaba so I've actually been using them now they're uh, they they are a little easier to work with they're a little more sturdy so you know if you're a little rough with the connections uh, it's not as big of an issue and um, they seem to do a pretty good job so it'll run down the line run through this into the back of the headlight I have another plug and that'll be the quick connect there and then through that I have the two uh, the power and ground here 12 volt power and ground I have the 5 volt power and ground as well as the data line right here that goes into my demon eye which is here uh, I've actually got the driver underneath um, and then the output so one of the things that I do also for reliability I'll actually run uh, capacitors and resistors I've actually got it behind the shrink tubing here uh, basically this is the capacitor uh, I just use a 1000 UF that seems to do a pretty good job um, basically it just builds up power so that any power fluctuations within the car uh, are less likely to affect your LEDs um, there is a ground side which is the side with this marking on it and the power side is the opposite side and uh, I'll show you an example on this side but basically like I have mine here so as it comes in right before your first LED uh, within the headlight you want to try to add that in there uh, I do it on the 5 volt side I have not done it on the 12 volt side yet um, you can it's not gonna hurt anything if you do uh, but I've I've been primarily just doing it on the 5 volt because it seems to be more of an issue with the SK uh, the UCS 2904 that I use in my rigids and my demonized the 12 volt stuff uh, it does not seem to have as big of an issue with voltage fluctuations or failure um, so I haven't been worrying about it on that but I do do it on the 5 volt. So uh, you got the ground side there. So I usually just twist that on. Power side here. 
I will twist that on like that. And that way it just comes along both sides. And then I'll take the other side. So basically like all you're doing is just adding this in line with the power as it comes in. So it's still just running through. All of your power and ground still touch. You're not running the power through this. This is just a little battery pack that's building a little bit of a buffer um, in case you do have a power dip. Um, as with just about anything, it's always a good idea to have shrink tubing. So I will run shrink tubing over these. and then solder them on like this. Try to get them as clean as you can. I'm just kind of doing this real quick. But uh, then you'd solder these connections and then run your shrink tubing over top. Hit it with the heat and then run your data line. We'll, we'll say this is my data line. It's not, but uh, this is my data line, let's say. Uh, I will use a resistor. This is a 470 ohm half watt resistor. Um, I run that in between the data line, uh, your, your first data line on the light. So as it comes in, I'll run uh, in between the data line. So this, in this case, you will actually run it in between. So it'll go uh, wrap your data line there. As the data line comes out, wrap it around the top slide your shrink tubing over top of that as well. And then just slide some shrink tubing over top of everything just to kind of keep it nice and tight so it looks just like that. Um, this is a, a technique, uh, I think Adafruit or one of the other websites for that, Adreno type stuff, they actually recommended this and uh, it's, it's kind of caught on from some of the builders that I know and I've been doing it myself and uh, I think collectively we've all pretty much agreed that this definitely helps. It's a good idea to do. Uh, in pretty much any addressable build. Uh, like I said, I'm not doing it on my 12 volt stuff right now. Um, obviously the data line is still protected, um, but uh, as far as the power goes for the 12 volt side, I, I, I'm not currently doing it, but it can't hurt if you do. Uh, that's just a personal preference as to whether or not you want to. Um, so beyond that, um, I think that that's that pretty much covers the basics of the 5 volt 12 volt inputs and how to run those I mean if you just think of everything as a device that has to plug into the wall but still gets a data line um, so the data line has to run through everything just like you would anything 5 volt you have to run the data line from one device to the next device to the next device to the next device the only difference that you're doing is you're changing the voltage of the power that's being inputted to each device so if you remember, okay, this is a 12 volt device, that means I must get my power from 12 volt line. Uh, my halos are a five volt device, I must get my power from the five volt side. So, I mean, you can even just run data lines from one device to the next and then separate all of your powers and just run power directly to your inputs and that would fix all of your problems with uh, the issues of power injection. Um, if you're running back to the main source and you have a you know beefy line, um, I recommend 18 gauge. Uh, that's what I use in in my lights. Uh, 22 is a little small. Um, you might get away with it on some lights, but uh, 18 is just a lot safer. Bigger is better when it comes to wiring. So, um, you know, I, I I wouldn't go to like. 8 gauge or anything crazy like that but uh, you know even a 16 or a 14 yeah it's a little big but but it's not gonna hurt you so uh, bigger bigger is better in general um, but I run 18 so 18 gauge seems to work pretty well for the stuff I'm doing but uh, power injection definitely a good idea if you're not already doing that uh, making it easy on yourself especially if you're new to this and you're kind of starting out uh, kind of have the plan that you may have to actually reopen some of the lights that you build. Um, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a 0% failure rate when you're first starting out, you know, that is awesome. Congratulations. Uh, you're one of the few. 
I've had plenty of failures myself. I still get them time to time that have to come back and I have to open them up and I have to change things out. It happens. Um, if you do just a couple extra little steps, it can make that whole process of fixing a light really fast. You know, you might be able to fix an issue within an hour or two if you set everything up right and you make it really simple for yourself. So things like quick connects. So if I had to tear this light back down after I ship it and I'm finished up, um, I got two quick connects. That's all I got to do. So to pull the light apart, I don't have to, uh, you know, have a wire hanging out the back or decide to cut it so I can separate the two. No, really simple. Um, keep everything really watertight. It's also very important. I add uh, breathers. So you can see there's a breather there. I put four in each light. Uh, there's two on the bottom and I put two on the top. I think uh, the other one's in there somewhere. Uh, I think it's like around here or something. But I, I do put four in every light and that way uh, they do breathe pretty well. Uh, one of the reasons why you want them to breathe is condensation. Uh, a lot of people will see water droplets inside the light and think they're leaking. It doesn't mean you're leaking, it just might mean that you're creating a lot of heat inside of the light, creating condensation. The better your lights breathe, the less likely you're to have that. Um, cable glands uh, is something I use. Um, I mean, obviously you gotta run the lights out the back of the light somehow. You don't wanna leave a big gaping hole where the wires are coming out. So you have to do something. Uh, there's several different options. I use cable glands, they seem to work pretty well and I really like how you can tighten them up around the wiring and it makes it so that if you know the customer's a little bit rough or you know with the wiring itself it doesn't put stress on the wiring inside of the light um, so i do like the cable glands myself uh, for the demon eyes uh, i do have uh, several different brackets that i've now designed these are now resin 3d printed with a abs like high heat uh, resin so they do take a fair amount of heat. I have not been able to get them to fall out of these brackets. They are tapered, so they actually do snap in to the bracket itself, uh, which uh, does make them hold on a little bit better. So I'll show you like in this case, I got the demon eye here. Uh, the bracket goes in like that and then it just snaps right in like that and it holds it in it's not going to go anywhere uh, there's no screws or anything needed it still has room you can put the heat sink right on top and depending on what this is this is actually made for the projectors that I sell on the website so that's why it does look backwards it's not actually backwards it is designed for uh, a different projector than the standard mini h1s or anything like that so it is a little bit of a different design but um, I do have the uh, I have a flat style like this so you got a little screw hole that you know depending on where your placement is that you want to have it uh, this may work a little better for you I do also have mini h1 and uh, mini d2s uh, sizes um, and you know, as I need different sizes, I can get them. I actually, uh, this one here is a custom size that I just made, uh, for the Camry lights themselves. Uh, so it's all stuff that I have, uh, or can make up if needed. Um, I think that's about it. So uh, hopefully I covered everything as far as with inside the light goes. Um, you know, this is a little bit of a learning curve, so I totally get that. And that's what I'm here. I'm trying to help you guys out as much as I can to understand at least how I understand it. Um, I still pick up new things all the time. My plugs, you know, this is kind of a new thing for me, something I've started using. I actually like them. I think they work pretty good. Um, but uh, if you have any questions about anything on the site, the best way to contact me is to DM me. Uh, through either Facebook or Instagram. Um, comments on the videos, I don't always get updates on those for some reason, so if you do comment on the video, I may not even see it, so just keep that in mind. Uh, hope this video helped you guys out.